This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. We're, we're up and running. All right, listen, no introduction on this. Um, we're just going to just dive right into the shit. Uh, Pete and Sebastian Show, uh, we are um, in a full-blown transitional period here into the new <laughs> podcast studio. <laughs> It would it would be cheaper, bro, just to move you out here and buy you a home, uh, so we could do this in person. This is uh, what are you doing now? Yeah, you're, you're you're just coming through so loud. I'm trying to lower it a little. Let me see. One two three test. One two three test. <laughs> right, bro. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, can I just point out you doing a sound test? That, just saying that it's, it's funny than half the shit I see fucking on Netflix specials. <laughs> Netflix one two three test one two three test one two three test one two three test. Here we go. All right, let's go. We're good. Well, We're good. That's good. That sounds good. All right, is that all good? Right. <laughs> wow. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Pete. <laughs> yeah. So, I got a couple things I need to address. You're probably gonna need right. a hearing aid after the show. We're gonna blow your ears. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna blow your ears right right off. The, number two, right. when when Patrick asks you to do anything technical, right? When he goes, yeah. "Hey Pete, can you lower? Hey Pete, can you do this?" Your face looks like my grandfather's <laughs> face when we asked him to uh, record on the VHS. It's a <laughs> It's a complete like, like you're looking for lost keys. It's uh, <laughs> oh yeah, the pressure is on. I mean, I'm all set to cast. Next thing I know, this guy wants me to lower my volume. He may as well be asking me to land the fucking Cessna. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> uh, okay, so, so uh, just the clue. Because he the... has control of my computer. That's why he has control of my as computer. As he should. That's the first thing I do. As he as he <laughs> yeah, should. Yeah. So. So then when he asked me to do something, I'm like, hey, you got control. <laughs> All right. So now we got to address the backdrop. The, I mean, the jacket matches the wall. You're almost like blending in. <laughs> well, listen, we're still working out the kinks here in the new studio. This is not actually the setup that we're going to be doing this from, although I don't know. It, it, it could be. But there is a setup <laughs> that that we're not at. But I got to tell you, man, I'm really loving you. You're on an 85-inch TV right now. I just sent you the photo, and you saw it. It's. I feel like oh, you're wow. in the room. That's great. So that's great. So, I, and the and the photos you sent me of the studio, bro. That, it's looking so good. Next time you do like a Tonight Show, you could do a just. You know, bring it. Bring, the host comes to you. We'll do it from my house. <laughs> uh, you know, the um, segment from my house. Why not? Yeah, no, it's beautiful in here. And once the carpeting gets in here and we are uh, ready to go, it will be. Uh, it will be uh, one fine studio. So let, let's uh, let's let's just jump into where we're going with this. Um, all right, all right. What the? Went to the Lakers game this week. Wow. Um, <clears throat> are you hearing this? You look confused. Yes. I'm... No, I mean, I hear it. There's a ringing, but, you know. And I also know that you went to the Lakers game, so I'm trying to act like I didn't know because, you, you know, you, you did mention it. <laughs> See, bro, that's why I never get the part. <laughs> I try to pretend that I didn't know that you already told me I went to the Lakers game. And you go, are you fucking all right? Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, next. Went to the Lakers game. Right, yeah, right. Got invited uh, by the head of Discovery, uh, David Zasloff, who uh, is responsible ba basically for getting the show. Uh, he's responsible for well done the show, the cooking show I did, and then subsequently now how to be a bookie. So he he invites me. Now this guy's in his I'd say what sixties. He's probably about sixty three years old, right? And his friends... He's like the president, too, of, like, Travel Channel, right? Which is under Discovery and... Yeah, HBO, I mean, Warner big, Brothers. Big dog. Big mogul, right? Hanging. Mogul. Oh, my 
Yeah, I can you have imagine being called a mogul? That's like that Trump's legend. He's a legend. I'm a mogul. <laughs> so <sighs> nice. Yeah. So that's, he, funny, um, funny. that's a funny word. You never think about that word. All right. Anyway, so you, you go he invites you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. This is a really cool story. I Here don't know go. who's gonna be there. How old is he were you saying about that's 63, that was last year? 64 years old, right? So I go. And it's like when, when uh, and, and, and again, you know, l- let me just preface this by saying based on the feedback from the fans, you know, and we're running a business here. So you got to listen to your customers. Right. right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> if they come into a restaurant <laughs> and they don't like a particular menu item. You know, maybe you tweak it. Maybe you take it off the menu. OK. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We've been doing oh. this for nine, ten years now. How old is Sadie? Nine. Nine. Almost ten. June okay. she'll be ten. We're, we're, I know because in two months I got to put a fucking trampoline together I have sitting in the back of the garage. Things haunting me. All right. Let, let, let's let's branch off on that. <laughs> now, do you enjoy putting stuff together? Like... You know, when Sadie was younger and she got a dollhouse or right, she got right. a, a bicycle or whatnot, right. do you enjoy no. going in on a Saturday and putting the thing together in the garage for a few hours? Never. We put together a dollhouse when she was six for Christmas. We almost got divorced before we were done with the first floor of this fucking thing, you know? It was insane, me and Jackie. No. Do you ever? Do you ever? I mean, is there... Ever enjoyment putting anything together? Ever? Except a suitcase for a right trip? <laughs> there is somewhat of a gratification that comes with completing a task like that. However. That's, they, but there's no enjoyment doing it. No. The gratification does not equal the amount of frustration that goes into it. So I, I take it to the trampoline. Uh, Can't you get a guy? All right. Now, I, right. I, I wouldn't call you, I wouldn't call you cheap. <laughs> right, right, right. But there is a, I don't know how to phrase this. And and I, and I go to the spaghetti episode where, where Jackie's pulling spaghetti off rocks, right? Side note, by the way, and I don't want to get you off track. I got someone sent me a colander that strains the spaghetti. Two people sent me these beautiful scoops with wooden handles. I mean, just anonymously, some of this shit. Unbelievable. Thank you, people. But anyway, you'll go to the spaghetti. You'll go to this because I do have a rebuttal, but go ahead. No, but like if someone heard that that, yeah. that someone was picking spaghetti off the ground, off, off, of, uh, off of rocks and whatnot, they would go... Yeah. That was rough. They would go cheap. <laughs> no. Well, bro, 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 you're telling the story out of context. You're doing what journalists do. It was the special <laughs> spaghetti from Italy. If anyone ever sucked down one noodle of that shit, you would be willing to rinse fucking mulch off of it when it lands in the mulch. I, you know, so so there's that. It was. It's not. It's not regular American spaghetti. It's uh, like regardless, gold. American it's, spaghetti's four dollars. Uh, the the, the Italians is, is six dollars. Don't matter. I'll send you another box, uh, and you can have it again. Oh, 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 well, you could just give me a half a box to go next time I come, like you did last time accidentally. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Bro, it's embarrassing when we rinsed off fucking uh, mulch. I thought we were, we were kicking up dead people. Now, what are we doing here, guys? These are old stories. <laughs> Let them lie. <laughs> There's no quick fix for anxiety and depression. We all know that, man. Unfortunately, it's not finding a new therapist or starting an exercise routine. Not more and regular meditation or a better diet. Sometimes you need something to unlock your brain a new way of thinking about and seeing the world and maybe maybe that thing is guided ketamine therapy from mind bloom but there's a new tool to improve your mental health at home ketamine therapy mind bloom is the leader in at home ketamine therapy having safely helped thousands of people overcome their anxiety and depression 
Unlike traditional talk therapy, ketamine works quickly and doesn't have the unpleasant side effects of traditional antidepressants. In a study of over 1,200 Mind Bloom clients, 89% reported improvements in their anxiety and depression after only two sessions. Right now, Mind Bloom is offering our listeners $100 off your first six session program when you sign up at mindbloom.com slash the cast and use the promo code the cast. Take that first step, man, and break free from your anxiety and depression with Mind Bloom. Mindbloom.com slash the cast and use promo code the cast. Free yourself, baby. Free yourself. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm saying, like, when, when you. Okay, let, let me put it this way. Who is more tight with money, you or Jackie? Jackie. Jackie. Okay. Jackie. She'll say she's not and that she's like, you know, just not. I just, I'm, I'm responsible with it, but I don't, I don't, I think she's a little more caught, conscious. Of, okay. Yeah. Ha has that over the years rubbed off on you or have you maintained your ability with your relationship with money the same throughout your relationship with Jackie. Yeah, no, I, it, she's not like crazily different about money than I am. I've always been as generous as my current financial situation allows. You know what I mean? The more I make, the more I'm I'm popping around, tipping bigger, but I'm never cheap. Okay. Um, and I've learned to like. I used to do this. And I learned this from with the cast with you. Like, let's say I was going to tip a driver or something, uh, the shuttle guy four dollars right and i'm like you know so now i'll just do like let's say like a guy recently i gave him i just gave him a flat out 10 and you go i go oh, 10 normally that's like most people are given max five but if i pay an extra five to this guy and if i do that 150 times in a year that's still what seven hundred and fifty dollars more out of my pocket. So like I'm I'm doubling my tips now because I'm thinking about I'm like even if I double all my tips, what's it going to come to? Fifteen hundred dollars more over the course of the year. But I'm walking away with a smile on my face because I know I was solid. So so I've been doing that. What you're misunderstanding, bro. Where I live, Sadie even said it the other day. She's like, Dad, how come everybody has a pickup truck where we live? I'm like, because everybody here is DYI everybody does their own shit you know i mean granted you got a big job you're gonna get a contractor but where am i you live where i am right just picture yourself like dorothy you landed in uh fucking fredonia and you want to get a guy to put together a trampoline who who are you calling to do that there's no one out there waiting for a call oh got another trampoline call fantastic <clears throat> you just answered your own question you said what? the whole town has pickup trucks I'm sure right. everybody there knows how to put together things, right? I'm, I'm sure everybody that lives right. in Fredonia is like your father-in-law. Handsy, yeah. could put stuff together. So instead of going in the backyard, pulling out your hair, wasting an entire Saturday putting together a trampoline, why don't you yeah. pay a guy yeah. $150, $200, whatever it is, $200, right? <laughs> who do? What do you mean? Who oh, go ahead, you Bob, could just I go on the street, flag down a guy with a tie hole, and go <laughs> trampoline. They don't want. They go. I don't need your trample. I don't need your two hundred dollars to put together your trampoline. I'll, I'll go. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go cement uh, so and so stay fit for five hundred. I mean, I, I don't. Nah. I mean, listen, bro. I don't want to be crass here, but if I lived in an area, I know that not only in California, they're also in Jersey. You get a Home Depot, the guys are hanging out. I would easily pull up, pull out a couple hundred bucks and go, who, who wants to hop in? Yeah, uh, yeah. there's no Home Depot guys hanging out. I, I, I understand that. But right. what I'm saying is there's guys there in your yeah. town that know how to put stuff together. And I'm sure wanting to pick up a couple extra hundred. This guy knows how to put stuff together. Okay. So then do yeah, it. Done. If you have no problem I am. doing it, do it on a Saturday. But what I'm trying, I'm just trying to suggest another way of looking <laughs> at it where on a, in, instead of on the, in the Sunday in the backyard, you're you're taking your family to like a, a lunch and, and you're hanging out with them rather than get yeah. in the backyard swearing. Now, now right. if you want to do that, fine. I'm just saying uh, there's another answer. All right. Hey, you know. 
Okay. I I don't think there is, but that's all right. I mean, I'm laying brick. I can almost see it from right here. I'm halfway through. It's very satisfying. And I sometimes wonder, like, uh, what would I be doing if I wasn't doing this? Would I be inside writing? I mean, I'm not Edgar Allan Poe. If it don't come to me, it don't come to me. Hey, if you enjoy it, then do it. Okay? That's it. All right. What are you, Tony Robbins all of a sudden? Okay. All right. <laughs> Been taking classes or something? No. Self help? I'm not taking anything. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just getting. I don't know. This this went off on a f- complete side tangent, but let let me jump back into right, the right, original right. into the original uh, topic. Yeah. We've been doing this for ten years, right? right. Yeah. Over the course of ten years, our lives have changed, right? Hmm. A lot of things have happened. Kids, um, moving, career stuff. The cast has changed multiple times. Right. So there's things now that <clears throat> when I tell you a story, and I've, I've said this before, when I tell you a story, I went to the Lakers game with a mogul. It's just spitting out facts, reporting the news. Okay. Because I'm just I'm just saying from customers review sometimes it might be misconstrued as oh i'm living some fancy fucking life and pete's the guy oh you know pete's the peanut guy and he's fucking down and dirty and he's uh you know he's you know he, he, he i'm just saying this is what's happening okay that, just telling that, a funny story uh, i don't like, i'm not, not i know like, you know yeah i know you know uh, right i'm just saying this right. is going out to some of the listeners who think I'm telling these stories to uh, brag or what have you. And I'm just telling you, giving you an inside look at what happens from a guy who is not used to any of this shit, right? I'm not used to right. going out right. to a, a, a basketball game and you go into the VIP area and you meet, uh, by the way, I met one of my, I'm not gonna say an idol, but one of my favorite actors on, uh, at the Lakers Who? game. Wow, I'm dying to know one of your favorite actors. Andy Garcia. Oh, wow. You I like thought him? you met him already on, I thought you golfed with him. Yeah. I thought you... No, I was supposed to golf with him, he never showed up. I, I saw him on the golf course and we had like right. a wave. But there was no like discussion. We had like right. a, a small interaction. All right. Now, for that those of you that so don't know Andy classy. Garcia, I'm just some some people might know, might not know. There's a scene. I don't know if we could pull this up. Oh, we're doing the red robe. Did, what is this? Did, 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 season did, five, did, season eight. I think this is the third. Yeah, time but we didn't have lot, we didn't have visual season season five. <laughs> Okay. Uh, right. Can, can no, f- it is unbelievable. It's Godfather Three, all right? And, and, <laughs> and, and maybe this is a show that we just reminisce about old stuff. But I, I, I don't know. I, I, Godfather. No, it's th- great, bro. It's great. Godfather it's Three. I want to show the uh, maybe a clip of him in a red robe while uh, two men break into the house. Okay, okay, just throw this up here. I want to I, I want to uh just comment on Great this um, cuz I know we've talked about this maybe 5 6 years ago whatever, but I don't think we've actually broke it down uh with game tape. Um <laughs> although although this, this is a new setup. So again, I'm looking at Patrick's face feverishly. All right. So let me let me set this up for the viewer. Uh, Patrick's going outside now, bro. This is unheard of. Bro, bro he's oh, on boy. the fucking up to balcony. The... <laughs> <laughs> he's got, he's trying to twist the 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 disc. Is he trying to get the, the, to the dish out there, bro? bro he just fucking left. <laughs> he left the room, bro. <laughs> I... <laughs> oh shit, bro. Is he out there to fix something or is he jumping? No. Keep an eye, guy. <laughs> Working for you is stressful. Oh God! Who do you call after that? By the way, do you make a phone call or do you go right to nine one one? I 
think I think you're making uh, some calls. Bro, bro, listen. The, the, this yeah. this this podcast room is so high tech. He had to leave. Yeah. Because if he plays it in here, it's gonna fuck up the audio. So he had to go halfway across the fucking yard to, <laughs> to play the clip. Now, all right. So can you hear me, Patrick? So when I say play. <laughs> <laughs> guys and ladies everybody out there because i know it's not just men it is time to reclaim your weekend sunday lawn care can take one thing off your to-do list the biggest most annoying thing sometimes on the weekend the yard right instead of spending time working on your yard with sunday you can spend time enjoying it how about that staring at it walking on it barefoot that's what you want to be doing sunday is everything you need to get the lawn you dreamed of this spring go to getsunday.com slash the cast and enter your address to get a customized plan created just for your lawn customized just for your lawn nobody else is going to have the same plan as you no trips to the store or hauling heavy bags since they ship straight to your home you just need a hose to apply Sunday. That's all you need. You can fertilize your whole lawn in less time than it takes to watch an episode of your favorite TV show or to cast. Sunday is easy and affordable. Some lawn care services cost more than $1,500 a year, but Sunday's full season plan starts at just $109. And I already told you, they mail you the stuff. Are you kidding me? What are you doing? You got to do this. And Sunday's offering our listeners 20% off. Full season plans start at just $109, and you get 20% off when you visit GetSunday.com slash the cast at checkout. That's 20% off your custom plan at GetSunday.com slash the cast. Get that grass green, baby. So listen, this, this yeah. clip, Godfather 3, Andy right. Garcia comes out. He's sleeping, and he gets a uh, home invasion, right? And two men enter mm -hmm. the house. Is, is this what? Yeah. And, and this is this is the scene. So let's let's play this. Hey. Come on, let it go. Yeah, fucking cut his throat, man. Oh. What'd you say? I said cut his fucking throat. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Okay, Chief. Drop your gun, man. He's gonna cut her throat. Oh, wow. Crazy. I already know this part. The guy got her. What the fuck do I care? No. <laughs> you got no choice, man. This chick's gonna be dead. You hurt her and I'll kill you both. You give up that knife, I'll let you go. You cut her throat, man! Right now! <laughs> hey! I wanna do something to convince you. Don't get frightened. Don't do any sudden movements. Just watch me, all right? Do you hear what I said? Okay. Oh, oh shit. Drop the knife. Oh. Okay. Stop it. Oh my god. Okay. I never saw a man. Hmm? Number one. Number one. Wow. I've never saw a man scared wearing a nylon over his head. Normally <sighs> normally the guy wearing the nylon <laughs> over his head is in control right. of the situation. Right? Right, right. Garcia right. flipped it where the guy with the nylon over his head is scared to death, right? right. And the beautiful part about that scene. <laughs> it was unbelievable. <laughs> the beautiful part about that scene, he's doing all this in a robe. Oh. I, I, I think when they saw how good he looked in the robe, they were like, how can we get almost like a Jesus shot of you in the robe. <laughs> and then the writers can come. Maybe it was Garcia. He's like, what if I got the one by the neck and, and I got the gun out like this and the robe's right here. So it's like <laughs> gun, you know, oh, money shot. Stunning. Oh, God. So, so. The chest hair. Oh. Bro, he's Cuban, right? Yeah, he's yeah. Cuban? Yeah. What do you think, like, if, like, Back when he was like in his early like nineteen, and you could see what he was about to become, if like the Italian community came to him and said, "We'll give you a million dollars if from here on in you tell everybody you're from Naples, full blown Italian, we need a guy like you," you know, because I love this guy, and the only thing is, as I go, ah, damn, he's Cuban, not Italian. That's 
You know, because I'm loving this guy. Like he's my new hero now. That he's, no, he's like the modern day Sinatra, and he's not even <laughs> Italian. What's going on? <laughs> you make a big, you make a good point uh, about paying people off to represent the nationality. I like that. Yeah. I, I really do. Right. Um, yeah. And it's a shame he's not Italian. Like I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. The Cubans must be so proud. Oh, I probably can't walk. He's probably like a beetle in Havana. <laughs> so, and I just want to make a rebuttal before you continue. Uh, I, what I'm liking that you're doing, honestly, and this is for the viewers too, you've made a career on telling people about your life and the observations you've made along the way. So as your career has grown and taken you to somewhere else, it's, it's almost like I've always found that this service to stop. So all of a sudden, oh, now now you're in this world, so now no one hears anything anymore. But you're not doing that. You're still sharing. And I don't even think it's necessary to say, you know, oh, I've never been here. Like, forget that angle, because what are you going to do the next time you go to the Laker game? You can't do that angle anymore, because now you were there. So it's like, this is the life I'm living. Appreciate you guys helping me get here. Let me keep sharing what's going on along the way. And I mean, it's not that, like, uh, people judge it like you're just saying what you do. It's life. I'm talking about your life. Your life was here at the Laker game. That's right. That, that's the and point I'm trying to make. And you saw Andy that, Garcia. That's, 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 the, yeah. that's the point I'm trying to make. So, I agree with that. Uh, I, I, I second that. Okay. Bird's eye view. In the VIP <clears> lounge. <throat> Garcia, get introduced. So cool. He's wearing a scarf inside. It's a hard move. That's a hard look to pull off indoors. Right. right but right, after yeah. seeing it, I bought a scarf. I'm going to start right, doing it. But... I might wear a scarf on the cast ne ne next uh, next show just just to, to pay homage. Now, like, what if he was a, a social studies teacher? Do you, do you think he goes no scarf? Like, is it a movie star choice? Like... I, I'm a, I'm not a socialist. I'm a movie star. I wear a scarf. And it's like, it's like, would J Johnny Depp wear all that jewelry if he taught shop class? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's that's what I'm saying. It's a, what comes first, the scarf or the movie star? <laughs> I I think it's, it's interesting. I think it's a creative choice, like artist uh, an actor or whatever it's in them like Pacino walks around you know like with with a scarf uh, it's it, it, a painter the 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 cinematographer for our our TV show he came with a scarf and he he has nail polish you know like it's a whole <laughs> right, right. it's a whole deal and you know like listen would I ever wear nail polish no but some guys when you see it on them and th this is st a straight guy right when you yeah. when you see it on this guy you go of course you have nail polish you know it just it just looks right. you know it does i agree i i could see a guy with hair parted to the side you know perfect jeans t-shirt and something would say to me i, I you know that guy he's, he seems like he's probably gay you know which is nothing wrong with that then I could see Harry Styles in a bikini with earrings and a ponytail and go, this guy's cool. This fucking guy is cool. <laughs> it just fits him. I can't. The guy can pull off high heels, you know? <laughs> Come up to me in high heels and ask for a Marlboro Light. I'm like, hey, I don't smoke anymore, Harry. I apologize. Just, it's a look. You're right. Yeah, like, like, Fascinating, like but... Clooney shows up with nail polish on. It don't look right. It don't, it don't oh, fit the guy, uh, right? No. Not at all. Not at all. Would you just finish filming some movie or something? What's with the nail polish? Yeah. <laughs> Clooney shows up, manicure, pedicure. I'm like, that's the Clooney I know. That's right. That's right. right. All right. So you got to chat with Andy Garcia. Quick exchange with, with Garcia. He, uh, we talking about, to, you know, going, to, hey, what are you doing? I'm not touring right now. I got to go and, you know, find material, whatnot. And he's like, all right, let me go. I'm going to get something, uh, I'm going to get something to eat. Just the, the little hint, the, the little hint of a Cuban he still got in him, right? He goes off. You ever you ever meet somebody and you're talking to other guys? Nothing wrong with the other guys, but the the guy that you want to talk to leaves, and you're like, oh, my, you know, like you, that's the guy I wanted to talk to, 
right? Not that I don't want to talk to you, but I want to find out more about his scarf. Right. I know. I want to know if he went to get a Cuban sandwich right there when he said he was going to get something to eat. <laughs> Those things are phenomenal. Oh, it's They're really great. a panini. I mean, if I invented the Cuban and the panini came out, I'd be like, are you fucking kidding me? We've been doing paninis over here for years. <laughs> now, I just want to do a side note for anyone out there looking for a movie. Ha- um, uh, what was the one with uh, Andy Garcia and Michael Douglas when they went to... Japan. Black Rain. Oh, my. Black Rain. Make it your Saturday night film, folks. You will love this film. Fantastic. So entertaining. Black Rain. Another recommendation on a Garcia flick. When a man loves a woman. And. Yeah, that's that's heavy. 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 Unbelievable acting. Unbelievable. Yeah. And, and, and an obscure one. Things to do in Denver when you're dead. You're dead. Yeah, that was good too. That was good too, man. Now the the middle one you said uh, about what was it called? When a man loves a woman, the loved one. Yeah, I I I love my wife, but I think I would have threw her in Betty Ford at some point throughout that thing. That was just too much to handle. Yeah, yeah, but it was it, yeah. it, was, it was some really good the acting, acting was unbelievable, unbelievable. So I don't know. Did you feel like there was enough meat on the bone, or you think Andy was giving you the old, uh, like, just mm. hard like, to yeah, say? I think he was hungry. Golf. Now he's going to get some. Yeah. Right. Game right. starting. He right. wanted to get some food in his body. That's what I felt. Right. <laughs> now right. we got eight guys there. David tells me, "All right, uh, we're gonna go out." Watch the game, and then we'll switch at halftime. We'll switch the seats at halftime. Now, I don't know what that means. Switch the seats. What's going on here? Yeah. So we go, sit down. I sit with David, two other guys, and we're courtside, right, right by the basket. All right? Awesome. The other four. Awesome. The other four are front row right behind the basket, like off to the left, right? So there's four right behind the basket, front row, and four courtside right on the side of the basket. So I'm like, oh, he means like at halftime, we're just going to go sit in the front row over there. <sighs> Yeah, you know, like, I right, the way I'm right. thinking, the way I'm thinking, or the way I'm programmed to think is, oh, we got the good yeah. seats in the in the front, and then you guys are up in the the balcony, and then you'll come down and enjoy <laughs> right. the front, right. right? This is we're yeah. just switching front seats. <laughs> unbelievable, right? Right? That's unbelievable, man. You know, that's so. So when you're sitting courtside, like if you put your legs out and cross them, would they be on the court? Like how close? And where do you put your drink? Are you on? Are you on hard wood? Are you on court wood? Or you know? Yeah, we're on court wood. Wow. If you put your legs and extended them as far as you could, you'd be about three feet off the line where the court is. Right. All right, so so you hear you hear the players and everything oh, yeah, with the yelling. Is, and yeah, the whole thing. You hear you hear the discussions with the ref. Hey, ref, he was holding me underneath the basket. No, he wasn't. I didn't see that. You know, you, you're getting the whole the whole kit and caboodle, right? Yeah. Now here's my thing. LeBron's out there, right? And you know he looks like in our direction, right? But he act like he ain't looking. You know, like he'll. There's no waving to anybody. I would find it hard as an athlete if the fans were that close to me. Not like the like comedians. Like we talk to the front row, right? But right. there's not a lot of that going on in a in a in a game unless like Jay Z's in the front and then he sees LeBron and then LeBron maybe comes over to him, shakes his hand and whatnot. But what I'm saying is Wow. Yeah, yeah. 
if I was an athlete, I think I'd be talking to the people like during a, a commercial break, I'd come over to the front row and go, how's the popcorn? I don't know. I, I'd feel like there'd be more interaction <laughs> sitting oh, that close. Got, dude, if I was playing and Tom Cruise was courtside, I'd tell the rest of the team, anytime the ball goes out of bounds by Tommy C., I'll go over there and bring it back in. Because as I'm holding the ball, I'm, I'm going to be like, fuck it. You're the man, bro. You're the man. Yep. Fuck it, Tommy C. So do, do you, like... It's, you got to do a look around yourself, the whole court side. Even two, three rows deep, there could still be movie stars. So, like, did you see a lot of people? Because that was the, what, the playing game it must have been, right? It was a playoff, first playoff, playoff game. game. I actually was kind of shocked I didn't see more celebrities there than I did, uh, unless I didn't see mm -hmm. them. Just, just in our group, we were with Al Michaels. You know what that is? Yeah, the, the sports, yeah, the broadcaster. The broadcaster, which I've played golf with uh, before and went out to dinner with before. But when that guy talks, I'm sorry. I just can't help but just go back to the 1980 Olympic soccer, or Olympic <laughs> hockey team. Man. Do you believe in miracles? <laughs> That's all I'm oh, hearing when he talks. Right? He talks like that he's That was him? I didn't know that. Yeah. He talks like he's broadcasting a game. That that that's the, that vo that voice is ingrained in our brain to think <laughs> right, when he right. talks, there's got to be a sport happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I believe it, man. I uh, I wonder if people ever make him do that at parties. Say that you do you believe in miracles? Come on, just say it, Al. You know. I think he had said it in a, in a story that he was telling on the golf course. He had said it. Like when somebody hit a shot, like, it, like oh. a, an eighteen foot putt, he said, "You know, like, yeah. out of nowhere, he said, do you believe in miracles?' Like, I mean, if you got that, I mean, is that trademark? That that yeah, he's got to have trademarked that. Do you believe in miracles? Right? I mean, any anytime anybody says yeah. that, he's got to get a piece. Right. Well, you you know the guy who goes, "Let's get ready to rumble." Yeah, yeah. Well, I used to when I used to work front desk at the hotel in New York City, we were across the street from Madison Square Garden. Whenever there was a big fight or even some sort of promo with wrestling, he would he'd he'd be checking into my hotel, someone's paying for him, and he's getting paid thousands of dollars just to walk in there and say, Let's get ready to rumble and then leave. Guy had a nice tan. Michael Buffer. Something I can't remember his name. Michael Buffer. Buffer. Same thing with Al Michaels. This guy should be traveling around. So I'm saying you saw you got a new Chris, you got a new Christmas show in Broadway. It's about to kick off. You're like, how much would it cost? What fifty k yeah. to bring in Al Michaels to kick it off? What do you believe in miracles? Curtain goes black. Play starts. Okay. Wow. All right, you're ready to blow me off. Go ahead. No, 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 no. How much does he get, <laughs> Michael Buffer? If we wanted to hire him, to his fee. Do, is, do, do we do we have a Michael Buffer fee? To, to to have him come in and uh cuz he's got a brother Bruce Buffer that does it for UFC but his his tagline is something different his his tagline is it's time that's what that's what oh. his brother does right right you got to get in the tagline business bro <laughs> you know just travel the world saying three words that's it go get dinner we're done we're we're sitting over here memorizing an an hour and a half act, and these guys go out there and go, "It's time." There you go. <laughs> no. Oh God, one miracle brand commercial. We're saying more words than Buffer says in a twenty year career, <laughs> right? Um. So, where did I want to go with this? Oh, so you're well, at this game like these guys are taking the ball out right in front of you. Shit. Lake what is, is it? I don't know how that yeah, that's that's what not. It? it says twenty to thirty grand he gets for doing that. I, I, mm. That that sounds right. Thirty grand come in, say let's get ready to rumble and leave. Yeah, but like, do you get let's get ready to rumble and then do you, this? Do you tell him can you hang out throughout the party and then maybe say it again when we cut the cake? You know, like 
do you get multiple had, yeah. let's get ready to rumbles or is the 30 grand just to start it off saying. and then he leaves Thir yeah and there's another fee if you want him to stay at the party absolutely so it's 50 grand. exactly absolutely it's like a basic car wash the basic wash is 30k i come in the mic comes down. You, if you have a mic that'll do that, I don't travel with it, but I'll even grab it, ready to rumble. It goes up. I'm gone. Throw another 20 on. I'll have a couple of mimosas chat with your fucking company. So, uh, fun fact. Mm -hmm. He's generated $400 million on that saying since 2009. As of 2009. That's... I mean, oh, yeah, oh wasn't wait, he sorry. In Rocky three, two thousand nine. He generated four hundred million. So we got, we got another fourteen years of, let's get ready to rumbles. God knows he must he must be in the billions. What was that right after Rocky three? Wasn't that in Rocky three? He said that. No, he was never in any Rockies. Uh, it wasn't. Rocky South Park. You sure was it? Rocky. Am I right? Ah, yeah, you're right. I, I don't I don't remember him in Rocky. Um, I thought he said it before the the Hulk Hogan exhibition thing, maybe with Rocky. Wow, I he might have said it. Yeah, wow. I didn't, I, didn't, I don't remember that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got sidetracked. So yeah, how was the game? Game was unbelievable. Went into overtime. Now here's another thing: when you're there with people, right? It's different when you're there if you just come. Like if you have the tickets and you bring somebody or you're there with your family, right? If I was there with my family, I'm always thinking I got to get out of here early, you know, because of the traffic. Right. So I'm sitting there going, and you know, listen, I'm, I'm not a big Lakers fan. I was a Lakers fan in the 80s, Showtime, Magic. I was a big Lakers fan. Right. Now, not so right. much. All right. I'm a Bulls guy. Right. They were playing the right. Timberwolves, okay? Um, and I'm with Lakers fans. So, yeah. again, I think we had this discussion before. If somebody invites you to a Lakers game and they're a Lakers fan, do you got to cheer for the Lakers? Yeah, if you have no stake in the who, – who were they playing? The Timberwolves. I thought I like, they were playing the Bulls. No, I'm a Bulls fan. But they were oh, playing right, the right. Timberwolves. Well, they like if they're not playing the Bulls, then you should root for the Lakers. The guy brought you the Lakers home game. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, what's rooting? What is, what does rooting mean? Like, I'm they, not I'm not booing. I'm not booing. They clap for the Lakers. Like my, they clap for the Lakers. <clears throat> I clap for the Lakers, <clears throat> right? But in my head, I'm rooting for the Timberwolves. Oh. Wow, bro. I didn't know that was going on. Yeah, That's... There, there was a lot of like, uh, and also, to be honest with you, I'm at the age now where I'm rooting for the team, I don't care who it is, to not go into overtime. Like, <laughs> like if the Lakers won and they stopped it from going into overtime, I'm happy for the Lakers because now that means I get to go to bed. Right here. So you're saying you want the Timberwolves to win, but if the Lakers, uh, for the Timberwolves to win, it has to go to overtime or else the Lakers win in regulation, then let the Lakers have to win and start the call, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. I got you. Did you get to meet LeBron or anything or, like, say what's up? Like Nothing. There's, a, there's no – I'm not piped into the basketball Are you allowed community. to take – you're not allowed to take photos that close, right? Yeah. Are you allowed to, like – you I took, are? Yeah, I took photos. I took oh, a photo. Wow. I, I'll uh, I'll send it to Patrick and we'll uh you'll see how close <clears throat> I was. So I went out to dinner last night. Uh still a little hurting this morning. I had a good time. But uh I wanted to ask you a couple questions about tipping, all right? Mm -hmm. First of all, my good my good friend, I went to the restroom, I came back, he did the old gave the card. It, like before we even started eating, he gave the card to pay for the meal, right? Move that we we both know we've done. Now, uh, about two weeks ago, can I, we can I interrupt? Couple. Absolutely, bro. I don't like that move. 
I don't either, bro. I don't. I used to do it. I'm I'm done with it. Okay, go ahead. So uh, anyway, a couple weeks ago, another couple like wildly out of nowhere p- picked up the bill very generously. And I wasn't expecting. I was planning on paying, but here's my thing. Now, when I go, it's two part. Number one, I stopped doing that paying up before you have a chance to move because my father in law, he was starting to get annoyed with it. You know, he, sometimes he wanted to pay and I was doing that. And it's like, you know, it's, he, he didn't. And I go, yeah, I, I started to think, yeah, that's not really, I don't like that move anymore. Secondly, are we like, is it no longer you go out when you worked at the Four Seasons and you're waitering? Is it for two couples to go out? Is it weird to, Say, we're going to split this right out of the gate. Like, nobody's, it seems like nobody's splitting that I go out with anymore. It's either you're paying or I'm paying. What's your take on that? Is the split thing weird? If somebody said we're splitting this, that's the last time I'm going out with that couple. All right. All right. So that is it. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> so, so wow. All right. So then I just got to, now I got a mental note. I got to pay next time before he does. Got it. So, the other thing is this, after he treated, they treated, we were going to a bar, and of course Jackie goes, we got the drinks, you know, which is like, I don't mind getting the drinks, but does that mean I got to get every drink, like two more scotch and sodas, you know, or does it just mean like, I went up, I left my car, and I go, I got a tab running, just, you know, that's what that means to me. But my second question about tipping I want to ask you is, um, if somebody does treat, um, I don't do, if someone treats for me, I never go, let me get the tip. If you're treating, you're treating. And if you're not, you're not. What's your take on that? Should you offer to pay for the tip when someone offers to treat? No, I think it's an insult. Um, Thank you. If I you're agree. picking up the tab, you're picking up the tab. It's, it's, it's part, uh, the, the tip is part of the bill it'd be like saying let me pay for the tax you know it's just it's the same thing you 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 pick up the whole thing the reason i don't like the you go to the bathroom i pay it'd be like if i didn't go to the bathroom how would this work what would you do like if i never got up from the table how would you pay the bill i like the move either you give the credit card to the host on the way in you get there early you give the you give the if you could I like the move where you, the individual who's paying, gets up to go to the bathroom and pays. You know, like if I if you're yeah, I see what you're saying, but I see what you're saying. I I, I even brought up to them how you said Seinfeld's move was that time where he paid before he even went to the damn restaurant. He mm-hmm. called ahead of time and left his car or something, right? Which is an amazing move. What I'm arguing is, can we get back to the seventies where the bill comes. I got it. No, I got. I I insist. Next time I come out, you can get that one. All right. I got. It. Can we just do that little nice dance anymore? Why? Why is everybody? I mean, next thing you know, I'm gonna go someplace, and you're gonna go. I bought the restaurant last <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> I just bought the whole fucking thing. <laughs> Have you ever went into a dinner? And in your head, yeah. thinking, let's say you and Jackie were driving to the dinner, and you go to her, we're getting this tonight, right? Right. Have you ever Absolutely. switched your decision mid-meal based on either what was ordered, something that was said? It w- it'd be like, th- this is what I would yeah. relate it to. No. Hold on. This is what I would yeah. relate it to. Remember in, uh, in Goodfellas? Where he tells Ray Liotta to kill the guy, and then they're having Glory. fun playing poker, and he taps and he goes, "The thing I tell you about, no, no, don't do it, don't do it." Forget that, forget that, not that, not that, not that. That's fucking great. Maury had no idea. So, have you ever went into a meal thinking you're gonna right. pick it up? Something happens where you tap Jackie and go, "Not tonight." <laughs> only, I can only recall that once, and it was only because unexpected new arrivals. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, the, the friends I bought brought their friends. I go to Jackie, shut it down. I ain't a fucking charity case over here. Okay. <laughs> well, here. <laughs> here. Here's the, I've had this happen where I've given the, the credit card, right? 
Yeah. And uh-huh. another couple arrives, the unexpected, <laughs> oh, and the person right. that's not paying goes, sit down. You, you know, oh. Uh, now, now, he don't know I gave the card, right? Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't. Okay. Yeah, he don't know. He's just being polite. All right. So that's a, He might right, think he's right. paying, right? <laughs> now sit down. Right. And I'm like. Well, now he is paying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I hear you. You're probably going, oh shit, you're sweating bullets. You got to go back to the waiting. <laughs> fucking <laughs> going back. He's turning into a fucking party over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's an interesting move. Do you take the hit if you did the pre pay thing? Do you take the hit if more people. You have to. Because like, this is this is funny. Last night, we're getting we're ordering food stuff, right? And Jackie goes to the waiter. Uh, this is before the friend I was with offered to pay or anything. And Jackie goes to the waiter. We have a few drinks, you know, and she goes, how much is the uh, uh, mahi-mahi? Because it was the special. So he's like $47 or something. And then he walks away. I say to her in front of everybody, I go, what are you asking the price for? I go, just, just fucking get it if you want to get it, you know? And she goes... Well, the halibut is $69, Pete. I'm not spending $69 for mahi-mahi. I, I'm, I want another price. That's that's where my wife is. She's not cheap, but she wants to know she's not getting ripped off, right? Now, I, I don't like that she's... I feel like the minute she's asking how much the fish is in front of another couple, they think I'm on food stamps. You know what I'm saying? Bro. Bro. I'm laughing at my own comment. That's no, fucking... no, no, no. You got that that, uh, that shit's got to stop. Oh, <laughs> bro. No, bro, Listen, come, on, come on. We're not at fuck. What what are we doing? We we're, we're shopping for windows. How much is the Pella window? I, <laughs> this is this is fish. You know this That's what I'm saying. I told you I said something to him. I was like that that was unacceptable, right? Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. So but, then, that's what I'm saying. Like you got to tell Jackie when we go out if whatever the, the special is, you got to figure it's in it's in relation to what the other food costs. You know, it's like they're not going to go the right. mahi mahi's eighteen grand. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's not going to be right. so far right. above what the fish is on the menu. Now, right. I could see you going in right. to get an right. SUV and you're going. You know how much are the automatic seats with the eight way thing? Oh, that's gonna be an extra five grand. <laughs> right. <laughs> but forty seven dollars oh, for the money. Oh, She's doing you, compare you, shopping with fish. Uh, considering what my wife is doing with the mahi mahi, if she had to buy a new Tahoe, br- bring a sandwich. We're gonna be here all day negotiating. Oh my god, <laughs> you ain't kidding on that one. So. <laughs> So, bro, so along those lines, right, I'm getting the fish tacos, and I go to her, uh, I say to her, uh, I'm thinking about getting this lobster bisque beforehand, and I go, it's, I go, and I, and it's not a money thing, I go, it's 20 bucks, which leads me to think it's probably a big bowl, I think I'm overfishing it right now, and she goes, if you want to get it, get it, you know, if you don't like it, whatever, so she's not cheap right now, right, so I'm like, yeah, maybe I will, I go to the bathroom, I come back out, I, we didn't order yet. And she goes, oh, the waiter came, he's paying, you know, my friend Jeremy's paying, really generous. I go, oh, thanks so much, you know, I appreciate it, you know. So I look at Jackie, I go, I guess I ain't getting a bisque now, you know, because because now somebody else is treating me, you know what I'm saying? So have you ever been in a position where you know it's someone else is treating and then maybe you lower your wine choice because you're like, oh, man, damn, now I can't, I can't jack him. I don't like And even when, though my friend is wildly generous and wouldn't care at all. Well, yeah. you go two ways on this. When you go when when you say you're paying, you have right. to we have to preface it by saying, listen, get whatever you want on the menu tonight. Don't worry about the price. Mm-hmm. Nah, 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 nah. I'm taking care of it. All right? Right. You gotta right. like give the people a little comfort so they could behave like they would normally behave. Now, obviously, right. you're not going to get a $600 bottle of French Bordeaux. You know, you're not going to do that. But if you were debating on whether to get the tomahawk steak at 120 and the filet at 58, and you want the tomahawk, you get the tomahawk, right? I I I, I got I go with the filet the minute I know I'm not paying. And when I get that speech, which is so nice to hear, that's that's almost reversal. That's telling me you're hyper aware of the prices, and I. 
I'm saying get the steak, but get the filet. Mm-mm. And I know, you know, a guy, a guy like you, I would get what I want because <clears throat> I know how it is. But most people, I hear that, and uh, I'm grateful. But yeah, I'm I'm lowering. My, I'm not I'm not if, I'm not getting the most expensive thing on the menu. No, you're not, I, and I, I don't I don't either. But if it's presented in a way, and the, you have to depend on the, the the relationship of the person. That is cool. I like that speech. Yeah, you got to you got to give them some leeway to uh, you guys. Want you know what the best way to do is if you're paying. <laughs> yeah. Go, guys. I'm paying tonight. Get the waiter over. And you know what you do? Appetizer time, you just start spitting shit out. We'll get the calamari. We'll get the bruschetta that, meatballs. You, that's you got- what you do. I like that. You, you. I just sit back and you got shit coming left and right. I don't feel bad about the price because you're firing it all up. I love it. Yeah. I think I did this at Milos when we went. You, didn't, yeah. you were never there. Yeah. I was there. I know what was good. And I asked you, do you mind if I order? I said it was great. Yeah, you did ask. That was great, too. So- if I'm saying that to you, do you mind if I order? And I'm taking care of all the ordering, and the bill comes, and then we split it. That ain't cool, to me, right? Oh yeah, no, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, it, exactly. The minute you say mind if I order, I know you're paying, even if you didn't say yeah, it. That's a good way to say I'm right. paying tonight without even saying it. What? It is. It really is. Now, what do you? Before I forget, what do you think? This is a move I do when someone's paying for me. Tell me if you think it's good or a little aggressive. <clears throat> Especially if I know I have another thing at some point where I'm going to hang out with them. Uh, like, for example, my, my uh, the couple I treated the other day, I knew we're going to see them for something later this summer. So I go, uh, I, um, I mean, so when I treat, I'm sorry, when I treat for someone and they're like, oh, thank you. And I, I'm, I want to make them feel like, don't worry, like, because I want them to feel comfortable. I'll go. Don't worry, when I come to see you in May for the thing, you can take me out and you know, we'll have a nice meal then. Uh, do you think that gives them more of a comforting feel and now they're going to order what they want? Or do you think it makes them feel like, what the fuck, when he comes to our town, that expects me to take him out? I don't like to pay and then predict future behavior. Right? Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I feel like it comforts them because I'm letting them know I'm treating, but only temporarily. You can get me when I come to you. So if you do want that lobster tail now, get it because I'm going to get it when I come to you. Even though there may never be, I'm coming to you. It's just a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's a, like a throwaway. You say, uh, I get it. you get it next time. I don't think you got to go so yeah. specific. It's like when we come to Nantucket, and we go out on Friday night, <laughs> you guys could pick it up. It's a throwaway line. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it's not like. But, you know, I don't know. I, I met someone recently. Yeah. Not met someone. I, I know somebody that said they don't keep tabs. They don't keep tabs of, like, who paid last, who did this, what they gave me, what did they. Do you got a running total of, like, you know what like if you see a guy or another couple that you've gone out with in the past right. do you tell Jackie right. I got the bill the last two times with these people or do you not, do you not no. even remember that this this is the problem and I know you noticed too luckily and fortunately I'm at a point in my life where I'm rolling with most people that can buy the dinner for me every damn time and I can buy it for them every damn time obviously you could buy me the damn restaurant like I said so it's more comforting for a man with the money to and the means to to treat than it is to be treated for, right? You know that. Yeah. You'd probably rather give a gift than get one. Yeah. Because it's more of a hassle to have to go, oh, I love it so much. I'll wear it off. Right? So, but you don't always get the right to treat, man. It's not about being the one getting treated for. It's like everyone I know, is, you know can afford to pay, so they pay because it's more comfortable. No, you you have to now thank me because, you know, that's what I have to do three times the rest of that. I'm like, thanks again for the meal. And you thank the wife, too. Thanks again. And then at the end of the meal, you wipe it up. Really, thanks again. <laughs> and then one last time in the car going home <laughs> at the end of the night, right? Again, man, I want, you know, you have to. So. I think twice is the, That's why you got to let. Two times is good. When, twice? Okay. When, when the transaction is happening, as he's mm-hmm. signing or she's signing, you go, thanks a lot for the meal. I really appreciate it. Right? And then on departure, when you guys part ways for the night, thanks again for the meal. 
I think if you do three, four times, it gets to like, all right, what is what, what is this guy doing now with the over? You're forgetting one though. You for, but you're forgetting the original one when unless it happens in the moment with the check when you first find out they are treating. Like when I sit back down, they go, oh, so and so said they're treating. I gotta go. Oh, thanks. That's then it. Then the check comes. The check comes. I don't in. have to that, say it again on the check. No, set? you said it already. All right. You give one thank you at All the right. table and one thank you at the departure, and that's it. You throw a thank you while you're wiping your face after dessert. And I then, didn't say wipe it a little. Whatever it is you're doing. Die. I think three, <laughs> or three, four is over thanking the person, and then the person goes, right. "Okay, what is this guy? You know, like, what's he doing? Does he think he's going to get another one at the, because he said four thank yous?" <laughs> All right, fair enough. Over thank you. I'm le- I learned a lot this show, man. <laughs> All uh-huh. right, we we got to tell the listeners here. Um, new environment here. We're settling in. Yeah. All right. I don't know what's going on. We got to work out the kinks here. But I'm liking this big screen up on Pete. Although I I, I I'm we got to figure out what what's going on here. We. By the way, side note here. <laughs> Uh, yeah. and, and you know we we're very transparent here on the Pete and Sebastian show. There's no secrets. So right. we had I came up right, and uh, Patrick was up here trying to figure out this shit, and we had like our first little. I don't say it was, it's not an argument. It was uh, it, it, I came in a little stern with with Patrick. Nice. Right, I said, All listen, right. bro, yeah. I hey. expect this thing to be up and running at eight o'clock. Right now, he hasn't seen this side of me. I'm normally kind of like. Hey, you know, passive and whatnot. But today I had a little fucking uh, juice in me, right? And I came oh, in here man. and I fucking laid into him a little bit, right? Now, wow. you know what I don't yeah. like about doing that? There's a weird energy afterwards when, right. you know, like, if you come, if you come in and go, that, 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 right. that, 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 and they go, yeah, no, 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 we'll, yeah. we'll get it going. Then there's like a weird, yeah. like, silence as people are like working Mm. and then i'm in the room next time i do that what i'm gonna do Uh, is do it leave just leave the room and then he whoever's in the room they could talk about me while i'm downstairs going you believe this fucking guy with the fucking thing and this and that and the other thing (laughs) i'd rather have them like air it out then me come in, I know they talked about me, but at least it yeah. clears the air, right? Uh, I think you're onto something there, you know, <laughs> but it's, you know, I, I equate yelling like that or getting hot. It's like fertilizing your lawn right after you put down that fertilizer. You really don't want to be on it very chemically, <laughs> but w- within a day, you start seeing the results. <laughs> Of, of it, you know what I'm saying? So it's awkward now, bro. By Wednesday, oh, you got a tight ship going because you laid fertilizer today, bro. You laid fertilizer. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. After you fertilize your lawn, you get off it. What are you doing? You're like barefooted. No, now. I laid in it. To I laid do in my own show. fertilizer, bro. That's like, that's like. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Did a whole cast laying in fertilizer. <laughs> No wonder why this guy went out to where we went out. You go, look at him going out there. You go, is that where you get reception? He's like, no, this is where I feel safe, you fucking psycho guinea. You've been scaring the shit out of me for an hour. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shit. By the way, by the way, too, now you know he's going to be there till like one in the morning getting that shit ready. Lana's going to be going, is he still here? Should we turn out the light? Should we give him some dinner? You think he's hungry? <laughs> no, uh, no, but it's 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 all good. It's it's, it's a lot going on here. Uh, but for the next show, is, for the next show, dial the shit in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, <laughs> there you have oh, it. Good hanging, Pete bro. and Sebastian show. Good <laughs> hanging, bro. Go to Patreon. Five yeah. bucks a month. I'm not going to sell it anymore. You know it's there. That's it's it. up and running. Check it out. Uh, right. There's going to be a full tour of the, uh, the the new podcast studio up on Patreon. So well worth the five dollars a month. Nice. We'll see you next week Absolutely. or whenever the hell we talk. All right, bro. All right, bro. We're hanging.